Welcome to another edition of Around the County, Bradley County Schools. My name is Scott Webb. I am your Instructional Technology Supervisor. Big show today. We've got a big show today. Mr. Denny Collins, my partner in crime. How are we doing today? Big first show. Welcome back. Welcome to Well, it's the, not really the first show. The it's the first is real show. Banging. I mean, that's, that's a banger, Scott Webb. I appreciate it. Awesome. As promised, not actually we're over delivering in this first episode because the rumor was Chris Green was going to be on the show. Mr. Green, how are we doing today? Doing fantastic. Excited to be here. Are you really excited to be here? Listen, you listen. I've <laughs> got to. He is. These guys have have I wouldn't be overachieved. A He's a pro. Yeah, these guys nice. have overachieved getting here today. We've we've had to That's juggle right. some schedules. That's right. But in addition to Chris Green. We have our other two new principals with us in studio, Mr. Ag- Adam Ferguson from Oak Grove Elementary. Adam, how are you doing today? Um, this is simply a manifestation of my dreams. <laughs> are you super super excited to be here? That is the understatement of the, yeah, of the moment. I, listen, it's a high bar. I get it, but I'm glad that we could achieve it. Also joining us, uh, new to Bradley County Schools, Mr. Jeff Paulson. How are we doing today from uh, Waterville Elementary? Hey, living the dream, just like Adam over here. So, hey, we are we're very excited to to have you guys, and 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 really, you know, what this podcast is going to be about is is just looking at the best and brightest in Bradley County schools, and we're and and while this <laughs> so <laughs> while How this did we arrive here, <laughs> while, while this group of individuals may be uh, underwhelming in that regard. <laughs> wow. uh, we are, we are, Diddy. We are excited to have these gentlemen with us today. Absolutely. The the, uh, the, the premise is again the, the best and the brightest, and we thought, man, what a great way to start this uh, podcast and this season with some of our new administrators, our new leaders, and we've got three individuals from three different walks of life, and they they've each come into their role in a different capacity, and I think sharing that and sharing some of their story uh, will be a, a, an awesome way to start this journey. Well, we are, we're excited to have them uh, with us. I, I guess let's get the, the conversation uh, started. I'll start with you, Chris. You're the, always the guinea pig, formerly of Stardom Sidem yes, on, the, on the spill, world-renowned uh, uh, fantasy football expert. But, you know, Chris, you know, talk about your transition from, from being a, a high school assistant principal to, to what the day looks like working in an elementary school? You know, I, I've been asked that a lot. <clears throat> and honestly, generally speaking, the job is very similar in the sense that, you know, your day is, is full of, of, of people and, and situations and circumstances that people face, whether they're adults at the elementary school, adults at the high school, kids at the elementary school, bus drivers, parents, you know, people are people are people. But specifically, the day in and day out is very, very different, obviously. You know, um, I love the high school kids. I loved my time at the high school. Um, But the elementary world just has a completely different vibe. And it's a very, it's, it's a, it's a great place to be. Um, I don't know that I would have been ready for it earlier in my career. But when I walked in for the first time, I was like, I, this is a great it's a little bit different opportunity. getting, getting all those hugs and congratulations and all that things in the morning <laughs> I mean, everybody loves you in the morning everybody loves you at the at the elementary school a lot of good morning mr greens uh adam you have a, a similar background and experience talk about your transition this year um so this past year uh i was the dean of students for the humanities academy at walker valley um, and so I was, I was handling big kids, big kid issues, and then going down to the elementary school level. Like Mr. Green said, people are people. The problems do look different. Right. Um, but on the flip side, the way that you love kids, it, it's a whole different world in elementary. Um, I've had to make a very significant effort to start to understand what instruction looks like in the elementary level, being a secondary teacher for my total career up until the last couple of years, um, learning what it looks like to teach a student to read as opposed to teaching a student who reads, right. you know, th- that, that transition has been probably the most meaningful of all of it. 
Jeff, you've had, uh, you know, you're, you're new to Bradley County Schools. and Maybe just give us a little bit of background about, you know, where you're from, how you got here, all those fun things. I'll say, like, nothing is similar between the school I was in and, and here. Like, that's just, it's kind of crazy because, like, we're neighboring districts, and we're both, like, Tennessee schools, and we're both public schools. And, I mean, we're, you know, you're both in, both schools are places that make you proud to be an educator, but, like, it's just, I guess all the differences are procedural. So I've, I've kind of gone from being, like, uh, where, where I was, uh, I was the guy that people came to for questions and things like if, who to call about this or how to you know advice and now I'm the guy that needs has to ask a question every time I take a step in the hallway. Well that's going to be a question for him a little yeah. bit later. What's the transition been like just just learning how to I, it's just I guess every school is different but but there's a learning curve when when you take a leadership role regardless of the leadership role and I think all of us around this this table, you know, I, I was a former head football coach. That's a little bit different than currently what I'm doing. There's pieces I can gather from that, but there's there's still a transition, even if it's coming from one elementary school to another. Yeah, so I mean, the uh, the, the biggest differences that kind of stand out to me are the campus, really, just because like I was on a 17 acre campus and uh, we use every inch of it. Like we had four outdoor classrooms and rain gardens and easels and oh, I don't know, uh, raised garden beds and greenhouses and things. And now I've got a 46 acre campus that's like a blank canvas. <laughs> I am so excited about this. But well, I, the, the, there's nothing as comedic as watching high school people come to elementary. So I'm really enjoying that show. No. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of people in this room that, that are still working on that transition. And I'll speak for myself. Well, and, and that is something I wanted to ask you. You know, that you've got two guys that were in the high school world. Uh, Coach Webb was in a high school. I was in a high school world. Zero elementary world experience. So what, what advice would you give to not just these folks, but individuals that are coming into that world? Like you've seen now um, two different elementary schools um, in two different walks of life. What advice would you give to leaders walking into that world? Well, I don't know where you're coming from exactly because I've not been in high school. But I would say be sure you keep a sense of humor when it comes to discipline because it's hilarious, <laughs> especially when you have like kindergarten through second grade. Um, the, I mean, and also you have to help your teachers have uh, to remember to keep their sense of humor because as you go on through the year, you know, like sometimes some of those behaviors get a little tiresome. But I mean, this is the time that we're training people how to be proper humans and we're trying to get them ready for the next grade level and to get them ready for middle school and um and so like i would say like enjoy enjoy the conversations you have with kids that have made poor decisions and help them to understand how to be great human beings it's fun can we get a rebuttal from the high school yes <laughs> i would, I would love, on the flip side of that i would like to hear your thoughts on that uh, well, I, here's the thing. And this, this podcast here, we're, yeah, uh, this podcast, here, this particular podcast, you know, we want it's kind of a little more focused on leadership. So, I, I guess what I would like to kind of get Adam and, and Chris's input here is, is, you know, what is the best piece of advice that has been shared with you about leadership? You know. I've had I've worked for a lot of great leaders through the years, and um, the one thing that I think I could take away from a lot of those people are it would be don't ask people to do something that you're not willing to do yourself. And so a lot of what like if there's a spill there, like sure I could call the secretary and ask the secretary to call the custodian, and, and then the custodian can drop whatever he's doing. Or I could just walk to the closet, get the mop, and, and mop it up and go on my way. And so it's just little things like that. Whereas, um, you know, as a leader, you have the authority to do or have people do what needs to be done. But if you're in the position and have the time and ability to do it, just do it. Because that's one less thing somebody doesn't have to do because you right. took care of 
Yeah. I, I've witnessed a lot of uh, those leadership advice pieces just watching the leaders that I've served under. Um, is it okay if I brag on Mr. Collins? Oh. Like, is that... <laughs> Mr. Collins? I just wanted to double check that before... <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Okay, right. all right. Cause Please allow him to continue. <laughs> this never happens. <laughs> Please. We're recording this, that, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, okay. this, this, this so so this that, that same thing that Mr. Green was talking about with, uh, like, doing it yourself. I remember there was one time, uh, I think it was when I first got hired at Walker Valley, that I, I called Mr. Collins, like, hey, what do I do with, like, this trash that was in my room? Do I just sit it out in the hallway? You know, like, what's the procedure? He's like, well, basically – if I were you, like, I would just take it because I, and he told me that same thing, like, just, if you can do it, why don't you just go ahead and go do it? Like, it, it, he wasn't calling me out. It was more so right. just kind of an advice thing, and, and I took that to heart, and I appreciate that. But also, one thing as a leader that he did was I was having trouble with one of my classes. Uh, just, there was a class I felt like I would sort of lost my, my leadership in that class. And Mr. Collins came and observed me for about an hour per my request. And then we sat for about an hour and talked through strategies and he gave me ideas. And I felt in no way judged. It was nothing but support. And so as I move forward with our teachers, I, I literally, I just want to be a support for them because I've seen right. that done and, for And me. that's, you know, we, we spend a lot of time in this career area talking about evaluations and things like that what we really want that to be is a growing experience yes. and it's hard listen i live with a, a group of teachers okay I, both my kids are teachers my wife's a teacher and sometimes they 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 feel that evaluation is a i a gotcha thing we're going to look at you and all that instead of we've got to do, and i think as leadership we got to do a better job of explaining that no this is just we're trying to help you grow so that you can impact students because I, I say this I say this to my department all the time all this stuff we're doing and I'm in technology whether it's wireless or phones or all that said our ultimate goal is we want to educate kids all of this is a part of it and and that's a part of it we want to convey that hey we're just trying to help you become a better teacher so that you can be better for your students and I feel that the principals under whom I've served at Okoy Middle School at Walker Valley High School have all used that evaluation model as a tool to make me grow and that's what's been the most helpful as a professional well I'll say this to, to Adam's uh, commentary it, it's really neat to, to hear that, but it's also neat to think about the prospects of who will be watching these guys because all of us grew up, you know, I, I look at Ron Spangler, Danny Cog, and Paul Crett and Carol Pease. You know, those were individuals that we watched them do the same thing. You know, I, Danny, the, the story of the, the Coke, kids spilled a Coke in the main, main lobby, and, you know, Danny Coggin wasn't calling the, uh, Roy to say, hey, Roy, come get the – I mean, he, I remember him grabbing me and saying, hey, come on, let me, let's do this. And, and we went and got the bucket and the mop and mopped it up. And, and so, you know, we, we watched that from individuals that came before us, and I think it's neat to, uh, to show that to those that will come after us. Because, you know, the schools, the system, all of that stuff will be here long after we're gone. But hopefully those uh, principles and practices that we share will continue on. Uh, Jeff, what would you say is the, the best piece of advice that's been shared with you about leadership? I just got to finish this note I'm taking that on September 25th at 11.48, Denny Collins got a sh sincere shout out. Oh, it's, you <laughs> no, have to listen, take notes. No, it's, you it's, have to take notes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be well documented. That's right. <laughs> okay, good. We're going to blast that from the rafters. I'm going to clip that out and just share yes. this part of the podcast. <laughs> Best advice I got was from another principal that said, um, not every decision has to be, to be made quickly, but like good decisions don't have to be made slowly. And so and that, was a, that was good for me because I tend to be kind of a, especially as a young administrator, I was a very knee-jerk reaction. Like, they asked me a question, I got an answer, you know? Like, and, uh, but, and so I've learned to kind of slow it down a little bit, but then to trust my instincts when I needed to. So. Uh, Chris, you know, what, what would you share um, with an inspiring leader looking to move into a role that you're currently in? What are some of the traits? What are some of the, you know, what does, what would you say to somebody saying, you know, I'm, I'm really thinking about getting into being a, a school leader or administrator? Don't. don't and don't response. say, and don't say, <laughs> don't. If, you, if you don't use the word total program, that's no. total inside <laughs> joke. There we go. 
If you don't use the word total program in that, you're <laughs> never going to be on this show again. I tell you, it, it's a fantastic job. I, I mean, it, it really is. But what you think the job's going to be versus <laughs> what the job actually is, is not in. I remember that when I got hired, I took over for Paul Critton when he retired at Walker Valley. And so for one week, I was supposed to follow Coach Critton around. So I show up. Hey, man, I'm shadowing you. I'm taking your spot. We're in his office. All right, let's go. Bell rings, doors close, and classes are starting. And then we went to the field house to check on a camera. We went to the, the toilet was, hey, we got to call Roy to fix this. We went, we did an observation, and then we had time to shoot free throws with, this, with one of the CDC groups that were in the gym because he did that every morning. And then we went, then the bell rang and everybody comes out and it goes to their next class. And my eyes, there's a whole world that is going on when the doors are closed that I had no idea about. And what you ask him what his job description for that hour and a half was, there's not a there's not a word, not a word for it. The the job uh, somebody we were talking about distractions at a meeting a couple of summers ago. And that is the job. The job is to distract. Whatever your plan for the day is, your job is everything that happens in between the steps of your plan because it's just not going to go the way you think it's going to go. And you have to embrace that and recognize that is the job. Adam, I, I, same kind of question a little bit. I want to spin it a little differently. Obviously, this is your first year as a full-time administrator how has that transition worked for you and and what are you learning obviously you're learning daily but what are you learning on your job that that is just unique and and different than you thought it would be um so at first i was a little concerned about going into leadership in general even before i started my dean work at walker valley because I, I just wasn't sure, do I have the type of personality? I'm not the lion, you know, sort of that, that real strong lion personality, whereas um, I feel like I've got a different approach. And I thought, well, maybe that means that I'm not leadership material. And, and I was just writing this down that if I were giving someone advice about possibly going down this road, it's that your shortcomings or areas that you feel like you're not strong in your in your personality it doesn't mean that you're not leadership material. It, it really comes down to what's your passion and, and vision and, and the purpose that you feel like is placed on your life. And so um, I, I genuinely feel like teaching and now being administrator is simply the it's the tool by which I'm able to carry out the purpose for my life and how I impact people. Um, and so you know, with with that in mind, the transition has become. It's a lot of asking questions. I think we, we've all felt that same way of, man, okay, now this is a new situation. And now that it's not high school, the way we handle that looks drastically different. And I don't know what to do. And so I'm calling poor Mrs. Kaler. Okay, she gets, like, I just, I can't, I can count more days that I've called her than not. Like, if it's a day where I haven't had to call Mrs. Kaler, I feel like, oh, man, I handled it today. <laughs> that was awesome. Um, so I, I would encourage people to think about what is it that you really feel like your purpose and the design for your life. What does that really look like? Because if you feel that leadership may be that road that you're going down, don't let your perceived shortcomings about yourself determine whether you think you're that material or not. Sometimes you have to explore and recognize, is this the tool by which my passion and purpose can be carried out? And, and, and I get a question and I, how often, and any, this can be for any of you three, how often are you guys, and I say guys in general, okay, I'm, not just <laughs> not just talking about you three, but how often do you as principals kind of communicate and bounce ideas off one another and 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 how does that you know how does that look? Because and, those guys are great resources for And can you. we have access to your group chat? <laughs> no, 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 can no, you can those be released publicly? <laughs> well I've got about Four or five different group threads with different people on strategic. Don't different. mix those up, buddy. No, I always double check. <laughs> but um, you know, just I call. I, I hate to give him accolades, but I call Jeremy Jones multiple times. <laughs> Listen. 
Yeah. We call Jeremy him. Jones the greatest human because yeah. I have yet to meet a human that's better than Jeremy Jones. So. I've called him twice already today. <laughs> <laughs> and Miss Kaler and Terry McElroy twice. But, um, no, th that's the other thing. And, you know, I would go back to, to two things, two points. Um, point one, we're talking about specific school administrator leadership in your building. But I would love to recognize the fact that every adult in my building is taking on some sort of a leadership role, whether it's within their classroom, within their team, within a, a club or a, or a extracurricular. But um, I don't know what my second point was. But I, I do think that having that person to bounce ideas off of and the support that our veteran elementary principals have shown for us, you know, or at least I'm, I'm sure for all of you guys, Everybody's willing to help. I've called probably all 11 or 10 at some point this school year just on some random thing that, oh, I think North Lee had this same situation or I think Prospect bought that. You should give them a call or, or whatever. Can I jump on something too sure. a minute ago? Because um, both Chris and Adam were, were talking about um, the advice you'd give an upcoming aspiring leader. And they both really talked to, about humility and I hadn't thought about this before, but I think that's um, I think it's kind of a key piece. Is you, not only do you have to be like exercise humility, but you have to be willing to be humiliated. And and humility is like if you think of the definition, it's it's not like it's not like a thinking poorly about yourself, but it's thinking accurately about yourself and your abilities, and then not thinking about yourself, and then caring for the people in your charge. And uh, sometimes people that want to get into leadership, I think they want to be this in the supervision piece, but that's such a tiny piece of what we have to do. Right. And it's, um, so I, I would say that anybody that's trying to get into leadership should really be willing to discount themselves and take care of the people in their charges. And Scott, I would say this, it's interesting, these three guys, so Mr. Paulson was in, in elementary leadership for a number of years. How long were you at Thrasher, Mr. Paulson? Was it? I was, I was there for 22 years, 22. leadership for 10 years. So 10 years at elementary school, Mr. Ferguson essentially had no leadership. Uh, he was a dean, I think, for at the high school for mm -hmm. a year, and then Mr. Green was a longtime assistant principal at high school, so three different uh, paths, and all three of them are coming in with the the, the phrase, I don't know. And yeah. I think that's so powerful in leadership, you know, just the ability to say, I don't know, um, and, and help me. And I think it really does speak to the system that we have where you have so many people that are willing to connect and the community of leaders. And it, it really is, I know we laugh at this, but it is a total program atmosphere. I don't know who coined that phrase. <laughs> I do know who coined that phrase, Mr. Paul Cretton. But it, it does, like, and it, you know, it, it matters. It matters that, that we're, you know, I, I do say, I don't want to brag on our system, but I, I think one of the things we do well is we are willing to work with one another. And that's, it's hard, school's a hard business. And if you're not willing to work, I mean, there's competition, I get it, between schools and all that, all that sort of stuff. But there is a, there is a, 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 a real tough group mentality that we are able to bounce ideas off one another, be there and support one another. And without that, you can't be a successful system. And it's not always easy. You know, those conversations no. are, are difficult sometimes. And sometimes, you know, you, you butt heads or, hey, we may disagree. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times he and I have fought from 8 a.m. until 12 noon and then went and had lunch. To, and, hey, let's go have lunch. You know, we're yelling at each other until we get in the car and go to – Chick-fil-A or wherever we landed and, and then yeah I mean that's just part of that that process of leadership because you don't always see eye to eye and you have to be willing to have those productive struggles you know we ask for it from our students hey struggle productively you know grind a little bit but sometimes um, as adults that's a difficult concept for us right it's a little harder absolutely um, I do want to kind of let's kind of we'll lighten the load up here just something funny inspirational thoughtful from from your your new role, and I'll start with you, Jeff. So, uh, I think the, the funniest thing that's happened to me so far was one of the very first days, like I just got the job um, from Dr. Cash, but nobody knew about it yet, nobody was supposed to know about it yet, but I hadn't seen the school, 
So I drove over and I was like peeking in the windows. This I'm like so the glad you're telling the story because <laughs> I was going to tell the story. You didn't tell the story. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm embarrassed. You've already heard about it. Uh, but yeah, I was peeking in the, in the windows and um, the secretary came out and she was saying like, "Can I help you?" Which is like the nice way of saying like, "What are you doing? Who are you and what are you doing?" There? <laughs> I didn't want to lie to her, but I didn't want to. I couldn't tell the truth either, so I just said like, "Well, I'm new to the area." And I'm checking out the local schools. That's a great and story. So she gave me a tour. And she gave me this grand tour, but she became suspicious because I was asking the questions a principal would ask and not like what a parent would ask. What's the budget? <laughs> Are we getting a sixth, third grade teacher? Are we going to have to move the music teacher out of the music room? You know, like, and so as soon as I left, she called, I think, the current principal and maybe the director was just like, I think I gave a very sketchy tour. <laughs> like, I, 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 I'm not confident this was a good thing. So when I came back a week later with the director and she introduced me to the school, like, I walked in like apologizing. Like, I'm so sorry, Miss Tina. Um, I was not forthright with you. I'll never do it again. And when, at least when she laughed, I was like, at least it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, like, it's going to be a good place. Well, I am so glad you told that story because it was definitely coming out on this podcast. <laughs> for sure. Adam, something that's that's happened to you? Uh, this actually was last week. Um, so we have a, an old boiler room. the The main building at Oak Grove was built in 1957, and so our our boiler room we now call affectionately the dungeon. Um, and so the dungeon is locked. You know, after you cross over the moat to get to it, uh, you you have to like kick the door open. I mean, it, it's a it's a tough place to be. And so um, I was showing actually our SRO that area because she had never seen it before. And so because I, I want her to be super familiar with our grounds, took her down there. And as we were navigating through this dungeon, which is full of chairs and desks, um, the pressure release valve on one of our hot water heaters ripped my shirt and cut the back of my arm. All right. no, nobody here believes that well, Val ripped your shirt. You We've all seen how you fill out a shirt. I, nobody believes that. I need you to tell be. the rest of this story because it's only going to play into you your hand. You can't be cut. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a machine. He's got like a, this guy's like Captain America. He's, like, <laughs> he's on Drago. Uh, so, so we get done. We, we walk up. Um, I, I close the, the outer gate to the dungeon. And I'm like, I gotta figure out how deep this cut is on my arm. So naturally, like any of us would, I pulled my shirt up and I'm looking in the window, trying to see like how, how badly am I bleeding? <laughs> what I don't process is the fact that that mirror that I'm looking at is really a window to a second grade classroom <laughs> and I'm pulling bodybuilder poses and I can't see them but they can see me so once I realize what I'm doing I just I don't even acknowledge it I just turn and I leave but I found out that the kids were watching and the teacher was waving during that whole thing it was so. triceps day for me <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly you know, right. Man. That's one of those that back in the high school day we would be going to watch yeah. video. Yeah. Of. We got to find Ferguson on, on the camera. We're watching that. Well, Mr. Green, I don't think you can no, top that I'll, one. I'm but, just uh, tapping out. I, I don't think I can top that yeah. one. That was fantastic. Well, then I'll, I'll fi we'll, we'll end the show with this. We'll kind of go around the room. And, and I, I put this on the list of the questions. And, and I just want to kind of get your vision and Chris, we'll start with you about where you see Black Fox Elementary uh, going. You know, Black Fox, I tell people this all the time. Right now, there's two pictures hanging on the wall, and Kim Fisher's going to be a third picture since 1952. There have been three principals since 1952. Wow. And so it's not an accident that Black Fox has, has built such a great reputation of being a community school, of being a place where teachers love to teach and families love to come. And so what I've told everybody is, you know, when you have a building that's full of strong professional teachers pouring in um, wholeheartedly into families and, and such huge community support, um, my charge is to support as best as, as I can, provide um, structure where I can, tweak things that may help things be more efficient and you know I told our faculty and that you know and try to let's all hold ourselves accountable with grace 
we're going to be accountable, but we're going to have grace to that kid or that family or that teacher. Um, but continue to strive to to uh, honor sort of the heritage that we have. And you've got a school that that has had a, a, a strong voice in the community and been been a big pillar, pillar of that. Jeff, we'll we'll start. We'll go next to you. What's your vision for Waterville? I, th I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Like every, I think everything that a principal hopes for an elementary school or maybe even middle and high school is we want all of our kids to be fully prepared for the next grade level because we, you know, that way the, the next grade level is easier for that kid and it's the most effective. And then if that continues all the way through, they have the most choices in life. And that's what we're, that's what we're shooting for. And we do that through making sure we have a very strong literacy program and a math program. And if we got that, let's make sure that um, every kid is attending as much as possible so they can take advantage of it. And if they have that, engage every child every day so that they're wanting to learn. I like that. Engage every child every day. Adam, your vision. Okay, mine's a little bit different just because we're in a different place. We have a lot of new staff members at Oak Grove. It's, it's really incredible the amount of new people we, you guys we have really in your do. building. And uh, obviously new leadership. And so um, what we did, we started out the year with just establishing our identity in the first place. We spent a lot of, a lot of time doing identity work. And um, from there... We're still working on crafting a new vision statement that incorporates that identity, but I can tell you the pillars of it. I feel like our identity is really wrapped up in the students that we serve. We have a unique group of students that no one else gets to serve but us, and those students come, with, come to us with a varying degree of need, and we are trying our best to meet them where they are. But I watch as our staff show unconditional love to these kids. And I feel like that is one of the strongest pillars of, of where our vision is gonna head. Um, I also want, I want students to feel the unity that I want our staff to feel. And then lastly, just safety. Not only physically, because we're making huge strides in yes, physical safety at, at our school, but also just the emotional safety of knowing that there is a place in which they belong. One of the things that we say every day to students is, students, you are welcome, you are loved. And, and I want them to hear that every day from us because we don't know what they're bringing. No, yeah. it's love kids. And that's what we're all in this business because we love being around kids and being there to help support kids. And, and if, you can, if you've got people that buy into that, the other stuff will work itself out. And that's the most important thing. I'll just share this about each of them as we wrap up just super quick. But Mr. Paulson came in new to our system, new to the area, all that good stuff. And I want to say last week we had a um, admit staff meeting. And it was a little different uh, in, in the sense that <laughs> there were characters and a skit and whatnot. And, uh, but Mr. Paulson was able to he, – he came in and, and he brought his ukulele. I was hoping we'd see the ukulele. And he, and he led the, uh, the group. We are, in, we are in the Jim and Carolyn Williams recording studio, Jim so we Carolyn need to Williams get him. recording studio. Yeah, we'll get him in the next room. But he did a great job of, of loving uh, the group in that room and, and just a little bit of humility and, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve, and if I look silly, I look silly. And he didn't, and he, he played his ukulele, and, and it was awesome. And so, Mr. Paulson, thank you for being willing to serve others. Mr. Ferguson um, – went into his building i want to say the first half day uh miss kaylor and i were there i walked in i was there just to stay out of the way really and, and mr ferguson had um his arms around a family that had was in a crisis to be honest with you their, their child had got on the wrong bus um did not speak the language and so there was a massive struggle and mr ferguson was loving that family on had his phone in one hand his arm around him in another and just saying hey it's going to be okay and, and we're going to take care of you and took care of the, that family and those kids i'm out at black fox i see mr green every single time i'm out there he's because you know he's six what ten six eleven i mean he's a taller guy and so he's 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 down on one knee and he's in the face of, of one of his kids you know and, and just as, as sweet and as kind and as loving to, to every kid that he sees hey you know How's your day? How are things? Hey, you're, you're special. You're this. And, and, and so it's just that it's neat to see these leaders operate in that capacity and, and love our faculty, love our teachers, and love our students so well. They're, uh, they're doing a great job. 
So on September 25th at 1212, we all got a shout out. Yes. Thank you from Denny Collins. That's my yeah. contribution. No, to listen, my yeah, that was about it. You're a little more quiet than I wanted you to be, but hey, we're going to take those days when we get them. But that's for sure. Amen. amen. Everybody, was, everybody says amen. Well, that's going to do it for uh, this edition of Around the County. I, gentlemen, I, I, I appreciate you being on the show. We had to juggle some schedules and throw some different times out there, but we all got in, and I, it, it's valuable. It's going to be valuable. This, I think this podcast is going to shed a different light on some of the great things that are happening in this county. So for Chris Green, Adam Ferguson, Jeff Paulson, Denny Collins, my name is Scott Webb. Thanks for listening to another edition of Around the County.